Turning now to our nation's border crisis, an outrageous new proposal could make it even easier for illegal aliens to live and work in this country. Indiana state lawmakers want to give illegal aliens their permission to drive. Bill Tucker has our report. Illegal aliens could soon be given the privilege of driving legally by the state of Indiana. Legislators there say they are alarmed at the number of unlicensed, uninsured illegal aliens who are driving in their state. Rather than crack down the problem or put them in jail, the legislators have another idea. I want to make sure that while they're here, for whatever period of time that may be, that they are actually uh, driving safely and have insurance to protect um, them from us, us from them. And they apparently will be able to buy auto insurance despite their illegal presence in the country. Indiana's Department of Insurance says there's no law in the book prohibiting the transaction, adding that once an insurance company accepts money, they are obligated to provide coverage, regardless of the insured's residency status. Ten states currently require no proof of legal residence when applying for a license, meaning illegal aliens can get driver's licenses in those states. Only two, Utah and Tennessee, currently provide a separate class of driver's license, or driving certificates specifically for applicants who have no proof of legal status. That is folly in the opinion of those critical of current immigration policy. This kind of state attitude, it's not my problem. I mean, that's exactly why we're in the mess we are today. It's not just a federal problem. It's a state problem because it's everybody's problem. And as evidence of the kinds of problems that a state's decision can create on a national level, on Tuesday, the FBI busted its second ring of criminals in six months who were smuggling illegal aliens, Lou, to Tennessee to obtain driving certificates. Now, why were they going to Tennessee? Because they can get the certificate there, Lou. <laughs> well, you know, I laugh. It's not funny. You're, you can either laugh or cry. Right. Uh, and anyone living in any one of these states where your state legislature has permitted this, uh, if you can't figure out what to do, I'm not going to say a word. The only other thing to do is put up a, I guess, a white flag of surrender at the border, or maybe Vicente Fox has already figured out Washington has done that. <laughs> Bill Tucker, thank you. Our next uh, guest made this nation's border crisis a critical issue in a special congressional election held in California yesterday. Jim Gilchrist is the co-founder of the Minuteman Project. He ran as an independent. His campaign surpassed all expectations and earned Gilchrist a solid third place finish, 25% of the vote. Republican State Senator John Campbell spending a lot more money with a lot better name recognition and of course with the support and a solid Republican district, well he won the runoff but he won only 45% of the vote. So Democrat Steve Young took 28% and Jim Gilchrist spending uh, very little money and having just a matter of weeks to campaign, won an astounding 25% of the vote. And he joins us tonight from Orange, uh, California. Good to have you here. Good to be on your program, Lou. Jim, this is an impressive showing. This is what every strategist that we've talked with was afraid of, that you would have a showing uh, above the 15% that you uh, won in the primary, moving up to 25% against two organized, established political parties, we'll, uh, we'll even name them, the Democrats and the Republicans. Did you expect to do this well? Yes, uh, actually I expected to do a little bit better. Uh, could not guarantee that I would win the race, but I would not have been surprised if I won the race outright by a couple of thousand votes. Uh, I've given, literally given a voice in government to that so-called silent majority. Uh, I've gotten people to come out of their caves to register for the first time in their lives to vote. These issues that I'm representing are very, very serious issues. And not only have I gotten the attention of Congress, I've gotten the attention of the President of the United States. And what happened in my election yesterday will continue occurring throughout the United States. All right, Jim, uh, bottom line is you lost. You ran on one, basically one issue, illegal immigration. Do you wish right now that you had uh, been uh, somewhat uh, more uh, comprehensive and uh, addressed a number of issues and been more, let's say, overt in, in uh, connecting uh, the dots on a number of issues? I did address more than one issue. Uh, I addressed the problem with education, a threat to a social security system, uh, uh, the shrinking middle class, the war in Iraq, uh, the need for fundamental tax reform. But under the key issue that I was, I was uh, 
using as a paramount uh, item was the issue, the so-called one issue of the uh, cavalier and reckless lack of enforcement of U.S. immigration law. Under that issue flows many, many major issues affecting the prosperity and future uh, security of this nation. Uh, just out of curiosity, why didn't you run as a Republican? I registered as a independent a few years ago, and to run as a Republican anyway, I would have been trounced in the primary along with the 12 <laughs> other competitors. I'm up against a machine, uh, whether it be a Democrat machine or a Republican machine, that makes me look like that lone Chinese patriot in Tiananmen Square standing up against that uh, uh, Russian uh, tank. Jim, are you going to run again? You betcha. We've, right. uh, you'll hear more about that at the end of January. Sounds good. Jim Gilchrist, thank you, uh, and congratulations on a race well run. Yes, and we did come out victorious. Thank Jim you. Gilchrist, we thank you very much.